Today we will be reading Does Catnip Work on Stouts by Ray of Frost. We are going to skip the summary because it does not add anything to the story. UA started a whole week earlier than any other school in Japan. While this may seem reasonable for a school as prestigious as UA, it also ensured that school was in session for Nezu's favorite holiday, the 1st of April, April Fool's Day. Every year, the rat came up with the most elaborate and petty pranks. One year, he swapped all the coffee with ground tree bark. Another year, he moved everything in the teacher's lounge three inches to the left. Aizawa crept into the teacher's lounge apprehensively, expecting a bucket full of water or a glitter bomb. When neither happened, he sighed in relief and slowly moved to the couch. The paranoid man patted the cushions to ensure they wouldn't explode or weren't filled with something weird. Determining the couch was safe, he plopped onto the furniture. He pulled out the extra-large thermos of coffee he made at home. He wasn't going to risk using the coffee machine. Mike entered the room even more paranoid than Aizawa. Seeing his friend had already inspected it, he sat next to Aizawa on the ground with a Cheshire grin on his face. Guess what I did today, the blonde said in a sing-song voice. When he didn't get an immediate reply, he took it as his cue to keep talking. To get back at Nezu for previous April Fool's Days, I spiked his teeth catnip. That finally got a reaction out of his gloomy teacher. You did what? Aizawa shouted. The man suddenly shot up and carefully gathered his things. Mike looked at Aizawa with confusion and then mounting horror as the weight of his actions finally clicked. Fuck. Ida watched with a keen gaze across the sea of students when he noticed something off. An abnormally sized group of students huddled around a bulletin board. It was admirable that they were so invested in extracurricular activities, but they were beginning to impede traffic. Ida made his way through the crowd in an attempt to clear it and make everyone go to their first classes. When he finally got to the bulletin board, he paled. Posted on the board were photos of Tensei and his friends during high school. Tensei and his friends running through the hallways? How preposterous! Ida shook his head and kept moving. He was going to be late for class if he idled much longer. The bespectacled teen turned the corner in frozen shock. Plastered over every wall and even the ceiling were incriminating photos of his older brother and teachers from their days in UA's hero course. From things like them making silly faces, to carrying out pranks and dares, to doing... Drugs? Ida could hardly contain his shame. His view of his older brother was wholly shattered. He glanced around the display once more, like how one would a train crash, and saw... Oh my. Ida's face flushed bright red as he fled the scene. Azawa prepared to begin his homeroom. So far, the photos were Nezu's only prank, and while he didn't appreciate his private life being posted for the whole world to see, he was glad it wasn't worse. Just as he was starting to calm down, the PA system chimed in. Shit. Music started playing over the speakers. It was a piano ballad with a simple chord progression, one that Aizawa instantly recognized. Just a small town girl, living in a lonely world. Mike's obnoxious singing blasted through the PA, and Aizawa stood and stared at the speaker system with a look of utter disbelief and horror as Mike's poorly done cover of Journey's Don't Stop Believin' played over the PA system. The whole class fell silent and stared at the speaker with dumbfounded expressions. Some were shocked, some were trying to hold their laughter, and some were horrified. And then there was Ida, whose face turned beet red as he buried it in his arms. Mike was panicking. Not only had Nezu shared embarrassing photos of him in high school and blasted what he sings in the car, but the rat 
also glued every piece of furniture in his classroom to the ceiling. The poor blonde hadn't been able to catch a break today. At least it was finally lunchtime. With as much stealth as the DJ hero could muster, he snuck his way to the cafeteria to claim his meal before anything else could happen. When he graciously accepted a bento box from Lunch Rush, he made a break for his classroom. He was not chancing the break room. He ran into his room and slammed the door shut. Slowly, he slid to the floor and opened the bento. And then he shrieked. There's a roach! Tremors from Mike's quirk were felt all the way in the lunchroom. Midoriya wondered what prank was pulled on the pro this time. Nezzy was obviously using April Fool's Day to get back at the man for some reason. Or at least it was evident to the green at. Midoriya shrugged and dug into his curry. All was well in his world until the alarms went off. The students were in a panic. They stampeded towards the nearest exits. But Midoriya remained calm. This is probably just another prank. No need to waste perfectly good curry. Shigaraki blinked at the now open gate with extreme confusion. He had just begun to disintegrate it when it suddenly retracted. The villain stood like a shocked statue as the press surged onto the school grounds. The mob ground to a sudden halt as they came face to face with the steel barrel of a gun. Hello, trespassers! Nezu's chipper voice played over the PA system. I opened the door so I could tell you to leave more directly, but you assumed you'd be getting a sound bite. You jumped the gun and now you're trespassing on UA property. As Nezu gave his speech declaring that what he was about to do was perfectly legal, multiple gun turrets popped out of the walls and aimed. They may be loaded with rubber balls, but they will undoubtedly be a pain to deal with. I'll give you to the count of three. The reporters started scrambling to leave the premises, sh dragging Shigaraki with them. One, the sadistic rat began counting, and then the guns fired. The paparazzi screamed as they were pelted with the rubber rounds that exploded on impact. Puffs of ultra-fine, biodegradable rainbow glitter filled the air and drenched the reporters. Oh, you thought I'd actually give you three seconds! Nezu's cackling was clear over the speakers, the laughter of a deranged madman. Meanwhile, inside the school. What the hell? One student yelled. We're getting bombarded too? Another questioned. I know I desire to sparkle, but not like this. Kirigiri did not know why he had to go on this fetch quest, as his young master called it, when they had a perfectly viable traitor to leak information. But he wasn't one to defy orders. The... The hallway he teleported to was plastered with photos. The photos gave him a weird feeling in his gut, but the bartender didn't have the time to unpack that. Suddenly, a man with glasses covered head to toe in glitter ran into him, causing a small puff of glitter. The man appeared to be the hero, Present Mike. That weird feeling returned as the panicked man shook his shoulders violently. Run for your life! He shrieked before taking off in the opposite direction from which he came. It didn't take long to see why, as a giant mechanical spider with a gun for its head came barreling through the hallway, pelting Mike with glitter bombs. Dumbfounded, the mist-covered man shook his head and returned to his task. He entered the teacher's lounge and approached one of the desks. He was searching for a schedule when he picked up one of the many photos out of curiosity. He wondered why they were significant enough to warrant plastering the school with them. The photo was of three teenagers. One with blonde hair laughing, one with the black hair and a small smile, and one with wispy blue hair grinning while holding the black-haired one in a headlock. Pain shot through Kirigiri's head, and the bartender collapsed. Mike dragged himself back to the teacher's lounge, now sporting an iridescent shine from the glitter. He tiredly flopped face-first on the couch with a small, shimmering puff. The blonde ground into the armrest. Something felt off, like he was 
looked like he wasn't alone. He lifted his head and nearly vomited. Laying past down the ground was a man in a bartender's suit. That wasn't the worst part. The man was deathly pale, with small wisps of purple-black smoke drifting off of him. He had light blue hair that floated like a fluffy cloud and faded into the same dark color of the smoke. Nezu took this one too far. Hizashi moved to crouch next to the man who looked like a warped, aged-up version of his dead friend. He reached to poke the man, but hesitated at the last second. He was afraid that if he touched him, the illusion would shatter. Instead, Hizashi sat with crossed legs and watched the unconscious man intently. The blonde was too tired to realize how weird this entire situation was. The man stirred and grunted in pain. He clutched his head and tried to sit up. Ugh. I feel like someone dropped a building on my head, he groaned. Then, bluish-gray eyes with a ring of glowing yellow met lime green, and Hizashi's welled with tears. Hizashi didn't care that it was too good to be true, or that Obero was technically trespassing. He was exhausted, and all he cared about was hugging his old friend. In the aftermath of Aizawa walking in on a sopping mic hugging a friend whose death took decades to get over, all the involved parties gathered in Nezu's office. Mike, Midnight, Aizawa, and Obero sat squished on a couch across from Nezu. Recovery Girl had given Obero a quick checkup and was currently running some blood work to check for abnormalities. So, the rat broke the silence. Not even I could have predicted this turn of events. However, I wanted to address why this year's April Fools was so over the top. Not self. Don't let Nezu anywhere near catnip. Ever again. Mike grumbled under his breath. Yamada, did you really think I wouldn't be able to smell the catnip in my tea this morning? The blood drained from Hizashi's face, and Nezu grinned evilly. Even if I did drink the catnip, it has no effect on me. Hizashi looked at the principal with utter horror. April fools, Yamada. Now go clean up the glitter while we finish getting Obero here back on his feet. Yeah, there we go. I think that works. I think that's a good I think that's a good place to leave off. <laughs> this is going to be a short Short little espresso shot, one shot, huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> know what to do. I think I'm going to do a blooper reel after this, too. Like, usually I have, like, just the outro or just the blooper reel, but considering how frickin' short this is, I think I could probably just do both. <laughs> I mean, I don't really have much else to say other than, like, yay, April Fool's Day special, and it's not just me telling y'all I'm gonna quit YouTube, or, well, like, crying or something, and then going, oh, by the way, April Fool's Day, here's a Rickroll, bleh, or, like, doing a dumb prank on somebody, because, like, who the hell am I gonna prank, aside from, like, nobody in particular, but nope, nope, we've got a nice little April Fool's one-shot that I think is pretty funny. It's like, a, like, a, it, it's just like crack concentrate with like a little bit of tiny bit of angst, but then more crack layered on top of it because, because it's so densely, <laughs> my writing style is so densely packed. I don't know. I, I honestly think this could be better described as like espresso. So like, it's like, it's an espresso, it's, it's a, it's an espresso shot. It's an espresso one shot. There we go. Espresso one shot. Let's. Uh... Oh my god. A two shot would be like. A double shot espresso. Oh my god. <laughs> why, why is this where my line of thinking was going? It's like, yeah, double shot espresso of, of fan fiction. <laughs> oh my god. I, I think I think I'm I think I'm good now. I think I'm good now. I think Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, the reason why it's ta why I, I literally spent the last like week 
doing, among other things, working on this. So, like, when it comes to the time that I dedicate to working on, like, fanfiction and writing stuff and then recording, I spent all of that time writing this. <laughs> I'm a very slow writer, I have come to realize, at least by fanfiction standards, because, like, usually people will, like, go like, yeah, I'm gonna update a 5,000 word chapter every single, like, every other day, and if I don't, then expect me to be in the hospital. And I'm just like, how do you have the time for that? I, how does anyone have the time for that? I don't get it. Like, usually it takes me an hour to write a few, th like, it, it'll usually take me an a good two hours to crunch out a thousand words and like just come on <laughs> how how do they have that much time on their hands I want their secrets <laughs> because it would be very nice to be able to be able to write as much as I would as much stuff as I want considering I have like what, five ongoing fics? Oh, I don't know if I have all of them. I don't even know if all of them are posted. Like, I have so much stuff that I'm doing. I mean, I do have one chapter of of the Reaper written, so I can podfic that. But the question is, unless you guys are good with these really, really short videos... I I think you guys might want to wait longer for the lo it's like you either wait so that multiple chapters are out so that I can do longer episodes or you can have them slightly sooner but in way smaller doses <laughs> because like I write like maybe two thousand word chapters it's I don't write long chapters and I think that also comes from the fact that I've been like you know, writing a book. So I'm, so when it comes to what I think is acceptable length for writing a book chapter, like chapters and novels are nothing. They're chump change compared to like what AO3 writers do. Like a couple thousand words is a pretty good chapter from like a novel or a chapter book. Like that's normal for that kind of media but then you get all into AO3 and it's like yeah here's a chapter that could be a novel on its own and I'm like ah, how do you upload these weekly I don't I don't get it I don't get it but I try I try I write I do a bajillion other things yay <laughs> Nope, but I've got this recorded, I've got this out, I think I might do a blooper reel, and then uh, just remember to take care of yourselves. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Determining the couch was safe, he plopped into... <clears throat> Seeing his friend had already inspected it, he sat next to his out on the couch with a Cheshire grip. The man suddenly shot up and carefully grip. With as much stealth as it as mm, blah, blah, blah. when he graciously accepted a bento box from lunch rush, he made his way for the ugh, no. When he graciously accepted a bento box from lunch rush, he made a why. The reporter started scrambling to leave the present. <laughs> Puffs of ultra fine biodegradable glitter. No. <laughs> Why the glitter tongue twister? When they had a perfectly good... Why couldn't you have picked... One with blonde hair laughing. One with black hair with a small... Mike dragged himself back to the teacher's lounge. Now supporting... Yeah.